I am Nancy Marin. I'm the program manager um, for this strand of research at Ithaca SNR that focuses on the sustainability of digital resources. Ithaca SNR is a strategy and research group, which means that we do consulting and we also do original research. The folks that we work with most are libraries, publishers, scholarly societies, academics, anyone in the realm of scholarly communications. They've seen their world change due to digital technology and we try to help them figure it out and we try to research the questions that we think will help them to figure it out. Universities have so much digital content right now. Many are trying their own efforts to put all of the fruits of the intellectual labors of their faculty online in various ways, whether it's course materials, whether it's content that the scholars have created through the grants that they've received, all sorts of digital resources. And, um, and yet the challenge really starts once the content has been created. So if a professor or a research team receives a grant and creates something beautiful and wonderful and useful, once the grant has ended, they will still have to think about who is going to continue to operate it after that stage. So who's going to continue to develop the functionality? Will they want to enhance the content? Will they want to attract more people to use it? These activities go on after the work has first been done. Sustainability, specifically for digital resources, has become a major issue. In the last decade or so, there's been so much creation of digital content in particular, um, which has been fantastic to see. But it becomes hard and very fairly complicated to maintain it. And by maintain, we don't just mean preserve, but we mean keep it valuable and interesting and dynamic and to keep people engaged in it. And so that whole suite of activities is much more complicated, and the fun only starts once the content has been created. JISC and Ethica SNR started to talk about a challenge that we noticed in the system. And we noticed a problem that was that a lot of grant-funded projects, the leaders of those projects, would create something wonderful <clears throat> and then return to the funder. And it was not just JISC, it was many funders were experiencing this, seeking additional funding to support the ongoing operations of the projects that they'd begun. In principle, this sounds like it might be a good idea, but often funders are looking to invest in new things, not support core operating costs. So the challenge was, how can these grantees, how can their projects continue to live on in a more self-sustaining way past that original grant? So we did an exploration of what those different revenue generating models were, and we created a very useful report that goes through what those are and who they're useful for and what some challenges may be. But the really interesting part of that paper is that as we did this research and we spoke to more and more people, we found that one of the biggest differences between the models that were being used in the commercial world and what we were seeing on the scholarly side in particular were mindsets. It wasn't this model or that model. It was a sense of understanding that there's a very, very competitive market out there, even for nonprofit digital content. It's a, it's a market for audience. How can we go out there, find our audience, understand what's competing for attention for the, with this audience, and then create things that they're going to love to use and be excited to use. So there's a piece of that paper that ends up talking about what these fund fundamental mindsets are that are going to be useful for people who find themselves managing ongoing digital resources. As we sat around with folks workshopping this paper and thinking about it afterwards, there were so many exceptions. People felt that they were interesting models in theory, but to really understand if they could work or if they were working, we really needed to look at how they were actually being applied in practice. So we decided on a methodology that would involve case studies, going to identify projects that were experimenting with this and finding out in detail why they'd chosen to try it, how they were doing with it, and what steps they'd taken to get there. The very first thing we went looking for were exciting and interesting and effective revenue models. And that was actually what drove the original selection. Um, we found we also want a diversity of locations. We have some that are in the US, some in the UK, one in France, one in Germany, and one in Egypt. And we also wanted different kinds of projects. So you see some that are born digital, some that are digitization projects. We wanted a diversity of institutional homes. So some are in research libraries, and some are in cultural heritage organizations, and 
some are in other sorts of places. So we have a nice wide range of types of projects that allowed us to really look quite deeply at how a very similar question, how do we support our digital resources, was being played out.